today's video, I'm going to show you guys what I decluttered this week, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Live, Laugh, Love with Jen. I am honestly enjoying this 40 bags in 40 days challenge. I once again want to thank Sarah from The Silver Lining for putting this collaboration together. And I want to thank my other friends for participating in this with me. It's so much better to declutter with friends. I'm going to link all of their channels in my description box below, and I would love for you guys to go show them some love and give them some support. This week, I actually had a very busy week, so I was a little slower with my decluttering. I did finish my teacher decluttering, and some of that I was not able to film due to personal information. However, I felt so good. I feel so free and I have the greatest news and that news is that this stuff all has a home now. So everything has been claimed and will be in the hands of teachers and students very, very soon. So I'm not sure how much longer these bags will be in the background. I also, after I have one more box out here of like some personal stuff that I had growing up, after I go through that, I'm gonna be moving into my house to do some more decluttering. Um, so this might be the last time you're seeing all these bags, especially if they get picked up, but I am so excited that they found a home. It makes me feel so good. And I think that um, this journey started out hard um, it was kind of like I had to reopen a wound, but I feel like the wound is he has healed and I feel so much better. I feel so ready to get this stuff out and I feel ready for a fresh start. So I just want to go over one more time the three types of decluttering that I have discovered so far. If you guys know more, let me know. I hope to discover more types as I go along, but the first type of decluttering that I found that I struggle or that some people struggle to get rid of is the rainy day clutter, the what if clutter, the I might wear this one day clutter, that kind of stuff. I found the second type to be the guilt clutter, something that someone gives you for a gift that you don't particularly enjoy, but you don't want to give it away because it was a gift. And then this type of clutter, which I call the emotional clutter, which is something that holds a very valuable and special place in your heart, yet you honestly don't need it anymore. And I can say that it feels great to get rid of it, to not have it sitting in storage somewhere, sitting up in the attic, sitting in the basement, sitting in a closet, that it feels good to know that it's going to a good home, to know that I had a very successful, very life-changing career as a teacher, but also that door is closed and that was a chapter of my life. It was not the whole book and I just am so excited that now part of a chapter that I'm in is actually hanging out with you guys and you know, it might be a little different than teaching, but I always hope every time I post a video that somehow someone will come across my video and I will change something in a positive way for them. And that is what I always hope and aspire to as a content creator. So I'm going to get busy showing you guys what I decluttered this week. I'm going to declutter a little bit today and then I'm going to count my bags. After I do all that at the end, I do have about, I don't know how long it will end up being, but I think it's like maybe 15 minutes or maybe 10 minutes of things that I decluttered this week that I wanted to share. Do not feel in any way, shape or form obligated to watch that unless you're looking for teaching ideas or you just like to go down memory lane or, or something like that. But I did kind of add that because I want to remember some of these things as well. So let's get busy doing the decluttering for today, which is some of, which is a memory box of stuff that I'm not even sure what is in it. And then we're going to count the bags. So let's do this. had more of your 
first smile What if the wind could spread your love What if your sweetness could reach everyone There'd be no wars Birds will sing about your heart Maybe the trees will whisper the word Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope I did want to make sure to declutter some today because I am doing the full 40 days for my lint. So I have this pile beside me of file folders that have things inside them that I need to shred. So that's what I'm going to work on. I'm not actually going to video this process because it has personal information in it, but I'm going to go through the folders, throw away what does not have personal information and shred what does. few things out in front of them in the box that I was just going through but here they are so let's count them so we have one two one hold on 
So we have one, two, three, four, and I'm counting this as a bag, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, we'll count this as a bag, 54, 55, 56, so 56 bags. And the majority of these are teaching bags. These pillows are actually in really good shape. I remember putting these out one summer and it was before we had boxes outside and we put them up in the attic and I forgot about them, but they are in such good shape that I was kind of like, maybe I should not get rid of these, but I have plenty of pillows. But whoever gets those pillows, which these are not classroom related, but these will be good pillows. So again, here's everything. So this is the part of the video that I like to show you guys some things that I found before I throw them away. I am going to check up in the attic and see if I have any more boxes. If not, I am completely done with school stuff, which is great. So here are the things that I want to show you. I have more stuff than usual to share, so just bear with me for a minute, but I just kind of wanted to share Let's see, here's these little pictures like this. I had a whole book of these and I would have a mystery reader and the mystery reader would come, would send, I had a mystery reader that would come each week to my fourth grade classroom. It was a friend, it was a family member or a friend of one of the students and they would send in four clues about themselves and the students would spend the week trying to figure out who was coming to read and then they would surprise us by showing up and reading us one of their favorite stories on Friday afternoons. So I have lots of pictures of that so I wanted to share. Here are, if you can see this. Ah. Here are some of my, here are some of my students listening to one of the mystery readers. They're grown now, so I feel comfortable sharing that. It's going to be trash. Um, this was, it says it was of what our school, what our elementary school name means to me. Every year I did a fourth grade graduation for all of fourth grade, and I had each classroom pick three students to read three things that they wrote about the school. So I'm going to read one that I had saved for some reason. It was written by a student named Leasia. I'm gonna say blank for the school name. Blank is a very challenging school. From first grade to fourth grade, I have accomplished a lot of things and learned a lot of information. One word to describe blank is challenging. Challenging is the word for tests, homework, and projects. This is one amazing thing about blank. Blank is one of the schools to get down to business. If you miss anything or you are lost, your teacher will work hard to catch you up. There is a lot to know about this particular school. All of the teachers care about you and want to pass each and every grade and want you to pass each and every grade. If you need help or anything, the reaction is the teacher. If you need help on anything, the reaction is the teacher. The teacher's job is to make sure everyone stays on track and to see if they need some help. The student's job is to listen and pay attention. If everybody does their part, nothing is going to be hard at all. Remember to always respect your hard, loving teacher. Remember the word for blank elementary, which is challenging. Blank is the best. 
So they wrote about what they liked about the school the most, and then the three students selected from each class would read that aloud during graduation. This was an example of some classified ads that I handed out, and the ads actually came with an application that the student would fill out. The classified ads had jobs that the kids would do in the classroom each year, and I would actually pay them. I showed you in a previous interview that I had my little classroom money, and they would earn classroom money by doing the jobs. Um, one job was, for example, a classroom computer manager, a self-starter familiar with computer hardware needed to boot computers each morning and shut down each afternoon, training available. So that's kind of how that looked. There were, a, there were enough positions for every student. This one was completed by Weston. It has his name, his date of birth, his address, his telephone number. Um, for which job are you applying? And he wrote delivery manager. And then the question says, what will you do if you're hired? And he replied, work hard. Previous job experience, he put delivery manager last year. And then a question was, have you ever been fired from a job? If yes, explain, and he circled no. Then he signed it and he dated it. Um, and then I signed and dated each for the position that they were hired for. So this was always a fun way to help children, to help students understand how to apply for a job, how to do like a little job interview, and it was also a good way for them to earn classroom money to spend in the classroom. So I wanted to share one of those. We were learning symbols at some point and I found one that someone had done for the word friend, so I thought I would share that. This was from a parent. Her name was Evie and her mom sent me this letter because we actually ended up starting a book club, but I wanted to just share with you how the book club came to fruition. She titled it my name. I tried to help Evie find some information about starting a book club for her age group on the computer. I have sent a copy and a list of questions the children might use to get them started. I also tried to find a list of books to read for her age group, but she did not really seem to want to look at them. She may change her mind. If there is anything I can help do, just let me know. I did notice that one of the book lists had questions and puzzles to go with that particular book titles and a snack suggestion also. When a book is chosen, I would be happy to look and see if there's anything to go with it. I do not mind sending refreshments when we know how many children will be participating. Thank you so much for all you do for the children in your class. Evie is really enjoy enjoying this year and we appreciate how enthusiastic you are as a teacher. And then it has our phone number. So that shows how parents can become involved and they can make a change as well. Actually, I think it was this student's idea to have a book club. She talked to her mom about it. Her mom sent me information and I ended up looping with that class and we ended up having our book club into the next year. This was in third grade. I looped with her into fourth grade where I spent the majority of my career. So we had book club in fourth grade as well. This is a poem. I loved to do poems with kids and I found some of the poetry this past week. And this is an I poem. And it says, I am athletic and smart. I wonder why I sound like a girl. I hear a lion roaring. I see a Pegasus. I want to see LT. I am athletic and smart. I pretend I am Nelson Cruz. I feel like I am an NFL superstar. I touch a rainbow. I worry about my sister. I cry almost never. I am athletic and smart. I understand 11 times 12. I say, what's up, Doc? I dream of being in the NFL. I try to train for the NFL every day. I hope to make it to the NFL. I am athletic and smart. And this was a color poem written by Marcius, and it says, Blue looks like my favorite football team. I like it so much when their helmets gleam. Blue smells like the beautiful ocean. That is bluer than the sky. Blue tastes like a blueberry muffin fresh from the oven. 
Blue sounds like the ocean and waves crashing down, and kids in a pool splashing all around. Blue feels like the water in the summer. And then this was a story that we did. It was called The Gardener, and the person that completed this drew a flower and they put some they put the plot, the setting, and the characters on the petals of the flower, so I liked how that was represented. This was a poem done by McKenna, and McKenna actually grooms my dogs now, so I may save this and send this to her, but it says, my eyes are as green as the grass, my hair is hay on top of my head, my nose is like a seashell lying on the beach. My mouth is a cherry on top of an ice cream sundae. My cheeks are rosy red. My ears are canoes floating in the water. I think I will save that for her. Um, when we did Benicula, this what we had vocabulary words and some groups got together and they designed a uh, character from Benicula, this was the rabbit, which was actual Benicula. They put the vocabulary word and the definition of it. This was somebody's Benicula work that I found. Let me see if there's anything about it I want to share. Um, they illustrated Benicula, and then there are just brief little summaries and pictures throughout. Sorry, I had a lot of stuff this week. This was for, and I found this, um, I think last week I talked about um, my Lighthouse project that I did. Um, this was kind of the different things that we had for the Lighthouse project. This was the rubric. Um, this was a guide that the children could use in planning their project. Um, this was their research. And this little tab was an outline to help them create their research. Ouch. <laughs> what, what he was saying is somebody made this for me and it has a little thing but it's stuck on the floor and it says, um, affixes and it says prefix and suffix. I'm assuming it's the um, little, it's a little duck from the commercial, the, um, what's the name of that commercial? You know what commercial I'm talking about, the insurance commercial. I'm assuming that they made this for me to help understand prefixes and suffixes. So Aflac, that's the name of the commercial. Um, I have no idea. This is some kind of a vowel man and it has A, E, I, O, and U. I'm assuming this is from whenever I taught second grade and we were learning about vowels and I did not stay in second grade very long. It was not my favorite. Fourth grade is definitely where my heart was. Um, here was somebody's picture of their lighthouse. Again, I apologize for my glasses. They are broken, but I cannot see without them. Um, moving, the Cape, moving the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. And it says the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse is in the coastal plains of North Carolina. Once the ocean almost swallowed it up, they had to move. The lighthouse is really heavy. It took 23 days to move it. The lighthouse weighs more than 2,800 tons. It is 208 feet, 63, millimeter, 63 meters tall. It is in North Carolina. It is the most famous, it is one of North Carolina's most famous landmarks. And this is a picture of it. And I have gone to Lake Hatteras and climbed it and it is a fun lighthouse. Here's another planning guide. Someone did this with a lighthouse called Ocracoke Lighthouse, which I've been to as well. You cannot go in it, but they just gave some quick facts, um, which I'm not going to read all those to you because we are talking about fourth graders, so they did have a lot to say. And then they gave a history of it. So that's what that looks like. Here's another lighthouse project, another one. Somebody made a brochure for their project um, of the Body Island Lighthouse. They gave facts. 
Um, the whole lighthouse cost was $140,000. No one is actually sure how you say it, how you spell its name. The base of the lighthouse is 17 feet around. And then they drew pictures inside. And I think they put that no one is uh, certain how to spell the name because a lot of people, when they see it's B-O-D-I-E, they want to say Bodhi Lighthouse, but it's actually pronounced Body Lighthouse. So I think that's why they gave that little tip. Again, an outline for preparing it. And another drawing of a lighthouse. I'm not gonna show you all that. I, this is what I did for science when I introduced something new in science. Because I know I have some homeschool moms who watch my channel, so if you ever, so by sharing this, I hope I can give you guys some ideas or inspiration. But like, this is when we learned about electricity, and before we started the unit, I had them put what they knew in this little box about electricity already. I had them write in some vocabulary words what they would like to know, so something things that they would like to learn about electricity. And then um, I put some sample questions here, what causes electricity, to get them thinking, and then in the end they filled in some things that they learned. So we did one of those um, every time we learned a new concept, when we did science. Um, let's see, what does this say? This was an experiment that I actually did when I got my national board certification and it was on conductors and insulators and I had like different things, different objects. I had a golf tee, a piece of straw, a brass screw. They learned how to measure the voltage and then they would write the voltage there and I actually recorded that and submitted that for my national boards. Um, when we learned about inventing, this person wrote that if they could invent something, they would invent a dog bowl. I would invent a toilet. Oh, they would call it. Okay, the invention name was the dog bowl. I would invent a toilet used just, a toilet just for dogs. The toilet would be small with a paw-friendly handle for flushing. This would make my life much easier. I would no longer have to brave cold and rainy weather to take my dog outside. This was what I used for spelling words each week. For some reason, there's a spelling list in here. I won't show you that, but this was a spelling contract. And they could choose as many of the activities below to do as they wanted to do throughout the week, but they had to earn 100 points by the end of the week. And then there were different things that they could do. All of the learning styles were represented and each were worth different point values. So those are the things that I wanted to share this week. Again, a lot of my time was spent going through and shredding personal information about me or about the students, so I did not capture that on camera. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and for going on this journey with me. I am excited to move into the inside of my home and get rid of some things in there that have been weighing me down as well. I hope that you like this video. I hope that you found it inspiring. I hope that you will check out the channels in my description box below. And most of all, I hope that you'll take time to live, laugh, and love today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye.